Well, hello there. Welcome to Goal, Money, and Love, decoding your love and money relationship. And why are they together? Well, you'll find out how money and love are so connected and how they should truly be treated as one big goal. This is part of a bundle that is designed to help you achieve your biggest goals for this year. So what are we covering today? Well, although they seem like two different subjects, like I mentioned, the way that money and love show up in our life tends to be connected. So what is it that we are attracting? We'll cover that today. But before we continue, let me tell you about myself. I am Susana Cresce, a manifesting coach for women entrepreneur. I am Latina, so the accent and any mistake, forgive, but I'm obsessed with inspiring entrepreneurs to reach their peak potential and discover their true purpose. And of course, I'm a planner addict. I have a line of planners that I truly love because it really helps us achieve our goals and I want to put together the coaching part where we get crystal clear on our desires, on our goals, and defining if it really is our desires or society's desires. And this is why this bundle is created, to help you understand where you're coming from, how are you presenting yourself, and how are you manifesting things in your life. And today, my two favorite subjects, love and money. So before we continue, I want to tell you that the ego will try to block you from your next level. This is real, people. Whenever we are touching something that might make us realize the th- ways and the um, the things that are blocking ourselves, the ego will try to make you feel like, oh, grab your phone, don't pay attention to these, oh, start cooking or start doing something And that is the way of protecting you from your next level. So please shut everything down, grab a nice notepad, and let's dive in completely conscious that any distraction that comes up is most likely our ego showing up scared from your next level because it's awesome. Deal? All right. Now, my goal for you today is to recognize the story you have been carrying when it comes to love and money to reconnect with yourself in a positive way and feel empowered, leaving behind the things that no longer serve you to welcome more love and abundance into your life and abundance in every area of your life. I do want to dive in very deep today and see how are you attracting those very important subjects. Now, before we dive in, I have a few questions for you. And please grab a notepad and start writing down at least a question and then take the time to answer them because that will give you a lot of insight of what you're truly thinking and feeling. How is your relationship with money? Seriously and truly, how is your relationship with money? Is money showing up for you? Are you showing up for money? Do you respect money? Do you treat the coins like it's garbage? Do you desire more money, but at the same time, anytime somebody tells you about money, you're like, oh, money is not the most important thing. I don't care about money. I don't care about that. How is your relationship with money? If money was a person, are you respecting it? Is it respecting you back? Are you choosing it? Is money choosing you back? Think about it. Now, how is your relationship with men? Are men supporting you? Are the relationships that you want showing up for you? Are you attracting the type of men that you want? And if you are in a relationship, do you feel that this is truly the relationship that you desire, that you want? How are you showing up for them? Again, how are you feeling supported by men? And I don't only talk about money, although that is one important part. But are you feeling supported when it comes to your career, to your desires, to your friendships, to your family? Are you feeling supported or not by love in general, by money? What do you grow up thinking about men? And what do you grow up thinking about money? A lot of people see these two things completely different. But a lot of times when people say money never shows up for me, I don't have money, money sucks. Most likely you can also hear the same things as men suck. Men don't show up for me. I don't care for men. 
I don't care for love. I don't care being single. But at the same time, you truly want to be in a relationship. So take time to answer all of these questions separately for money, separately for love, and then try to see if there are some things that are exactly the same. Or are they completely opposite? Because that's another way that you are reflecting your beliefs. And we'll cover that a little later. But these questions are very important. Now, why is money related to love? Well, support. Love and money are meant to support us. We are meant to be in a relationship that is give and take, that, it, that is respectful both ways. We are supposed to feel calm, secure, confident when it comes to money and love. The number one reason for divorces are money problems. Money and love are very connected. And we tend to speak about money and love in the same way. I don't care for it. I don't want it. That's not the most important thing. But at the same time, we truly deep down want it. We are afraid to show up in the world sometimes and honestly say, hey, I would love more of this. But deep down, we want it. That kind of relationship is vital. And then the family history. We tend to repeat or oppose what we grew up hearing. How was your relationship with with your parents? How was your parents' relationship when you were growing up? Did they truly love each other? Were they there because of kids? Did they ever fight about money? What did you hear growing up about money? And what did you hear growing up about men? Did you not have one of the parents? All of those things are really connected. And that's why we cover them together. Now, as I mentioned, there are three ways we leave when it comes to repeating patterns. We either oppose, we either repair or repeat. And what I mean by that is, if you grew up in an environment where your parents always fought about money, maybe you want to oppose that and you are making all of the money that you desire, making money for you, it's easy, you completely oppose the way that your parents were behaving about money. You said when you were little, I would never fight about money So I would make everything possible to make all the money that I can and that I need to avoid that. Great. So you're opposing, but that doesn't mean that you're not part of that family. So in one way or another, you try to subconsciously correlate again to your parents. So what other area could you be sabotaging? You could be repairing. Perhaps you grew up with a single mother and you swore that you would never start a family as a single mother. So you make everything possible to make sure that that relationship stays together. Even if you don't love each other, even if you know your love life with your spouse right now, it's doomed. But you are repairing what you saw growing up. So you are committed to making that relationship work, even if it's hurting you deep down, even if your children are learning that love is just being there without wanting to be there. But you're trying to repair that. You're holding on to that belief that strong that you don't get to live your full purpose when it comes to love and money or any other area of your life. Or you repeat whatever pattern you saw around money or love in your family, then you keep repeating it. Either way, You are doing something that is not your true purpose when it comes to money, love, or any area of your life that you want to explore. You are meant to have your own path, your own relationship. And this is one of the biggest leaps that we do as human beings on this planet Earth is recognizing that being loyal to our parents doesn't mean that we need to oppose, repair, or repeat. But we get to live our own life, our own purpose, and still be their child. So I want you to write down, now that we've talked about this, what do you truly want in a romantic relationship? 
I would love for you to sit down. Again, if you're single, fantastic. Write down what you would love in a future mate. And if you're in a relationship, you are still on time to define and rewrite what is it that you truly want in that romantic relationship. What's bothering you? What would you like to work on? So one of the biggest exercises that I think had the biggest impact when I was single it was writing down what I truly wanted in a re romantic relationship. And it, it wasn't just five things like, you know, tall, nice, you know, that's no, it was not that. It was a list that I searched deep down. I sat down for a long time and I started first with 50 things and I took it up to 200 things that I wanted on a partner. And when you get to that level of clarity, you truly realize what is that you want. The universe is listening. So if you just say um, that he has a nice relationship with his mother and don't clarify everything around it, you could attract somebody that has such a good relationship with their mother that maybe doesn't attend you that's, uh, that well. So you need to put all of the angles around your desire. So you want somebody that has a nice relationship with your parents, great. Also somebody that loves your parents, that their parents and your parents relate very well together, that you like their parents, that he likes your parents. So there we have six different things that we can talk about around parents and getting as much clarity as possible. Because again, the universe is listening and it has a very uh, particular sense of humor when it comes to delivering our desires. So be crystal clear. Also, what do you want in the money and abundance department? And you get to be honest and real here. We don't all have the same desires. And a lot of times we say the basic, you know, a big house, a nice car, traveling, great. But again, let's go deep down. What does a big house mean for you? For somebody, a big house could be a three bedroom, three bath bathroom, normal house to grow a small family. For some people, it's a mansion. For some people, a tiny house that is beautifully decorated is more than enough. So what is it that you truly want? And write down every aspect around your desires. Why is it that you want money? Money is just energy. Money just flows to your thoughts. It doesn't have feelings. It doesn't have, you know, it's not good or bad. It's just energy. And it goes to where there's purpose. So what is it? that you want in the money and abundance department. Not only a million dollars, don't say a million dollars because a million dollars. Sit down and write down why do you want that and what is it that you want. If it's the house, around what price would it, would it be? If it's the car, around what price? Calculate your lifestyle and then truly give a meaning to that amount. A lot of people say, I want to be a millionaire. But when they write down their ideal life when it comes to material things, they realize that $300,000 would make it. So, Again, sit down and be very, very specific. Now let's see in which ways do they correlate. Are you being honest in both ways? Because maybe you like somebody that loves traveling in a simple life and that does missions in different countries of the world, but then you desire this big mansion and this big car. Do they match? Would a person with those life goals would match the desires that you have for your physical life? Again, the universe delivers when you have clarity. When you go to a restaurant and you just say, hey, give me some food, you can complain when they just give you a loaf of bread. Hey, I wanted steak, I wanted something. No, you said something to eat, there you go. So the same happens with the universe. Let's be crystal clear when it comes to that. Going back to the same restaurant, if you really wanted to go to this really fancy exclusive restaurant, you can complain because they didn't have the chicken nuggets that you truly desire. So again, what you desire is up to you and you have all the rights. You just have to have a balance and correlation when it comes to all of your desires. Now that we have exactly what we want in love department, in the money department, how do they relate to each other? What kind of behaviors do you need to have to attract those desires? And this is where we get lost when it comes to law of attraction. A lot of times we want a man that has this type of car, this type of money that takes me to these type of places, that is this smart, 
or has this type of job. Yet the way that we're showing up in the world does not fit in the world of that man that you described. So what do you need to do to be the person that is attracted to that type of person, to that type of money? Do you need to show up more in your business, in your job? Do you need to meditate? Do you need to dress up in a different way? Do you need to go to different places? Do you need to have different beliefs? Do you need to work out, eat healthy food? What do you need to do? What behaviors do you need to have to attract that kind of relationship and that kind of money? And how have you been showing up for them? When you make that list of the things that you should be doing to attract that type of money and that type of person, and you realize that you have not been doing them, then how could you bash money for not being part of your life? Or how can you bash all men saying that all men are this type of people when you're, you've been looking for this ideal man in this dive bar where you get to attract a different kind of person? So are you showing up for money? Are you showing up for men? And I, what I mean by that is not, especially when it comes to men, it's like, hi, I'm here, is how are you presenting yourself? How are you believing about yourself? How are you dressing up? How are you feeling? What are your thoughts? All of that. So again, when it comes to manifesting, you need to get crystal clear in your desires. And we've done that in the past exercises. And I really want you to sit down after this or you can stop this. Get crystal clear in your desires. Get that list really long because the more clear you are, the more the universe understands what to give you. Also define your do not do list. We constantly add things that we want to do, that we want to achieve, that we want to conquer, but we don't stop doing things that take all of our time. How could you add working out, eating healthy, going to the library when you are still watching five straight hours of Netflix, when you're still sitting down and reading and seeing videos on Facebook for hours? So your do not do list is as important, if not more important than the to do list because the universe doesn't like empty spaces. So you will fill it up again, but you need to be very conscious of the things that you are doing that are taking up your time, that are turning you into the person that maybe does not attract the type of desires that you have. And then the actions that will actually move you forward, doing vision boards, meditating, doing exercises and everything is really good. And I constantly do it. And I think it's a major step forward. But we also need to take those times to get inspired. And those inspired actions are the ones that will move you forward. Do you feel called to go to a certain place? And maybe you'll meet somebody there. Do you feel called to join different websites or to do a different type of actions when it comes to your business or your job? Doing those inspired actions are the ones that the universe is hinting at you that will get you there. And also keep track of all of the things that are showing up for you. A lot of times we say, oh, you know, money is not showing up. Money never shows up. I'm not meant to have money. But you never track it down. So maybe you are finding pennies on the street. Maybe you did get a nice bonus. Maybe you constantly find coupons or ways to save money. Or you receive a lot of gifts and you don't track any of that because it doesn't really feel like money. But that is the way that it has been showing up is what you have been attracting. And if you don't recognize those things when they're small, how would money ever want to come to you in a bigger sense? If you don't recognize the little things, how would you recognize the bigger things? That's what money feels. That's what that energy feels. So being thankful and recognizing every little thing is a huge way of attracting what we truly desire. So being thankful for what we have. Also in the love department, perhaps you don't have the relationship that you desire right now, but you have been going out on really nice dates. Not necessarily the men of your dreams, but you get to go to nice restaurants. You get to experience something different. Maybe you make really nice friends. If you don't recognize that as part of the process, how would the ideal prospect also come and feel recognized? 
So again, keeping track of the ways that those things are showing up in your life and also be willing to receive. We get so caught up in our story of victim a lot of times that we don't want those things to show up. Sounds crazy, I know, but it's the reality. We always have benefits for anything negative. If you don't make more money, then you have an excuse to not have to pay for certain things when you go out, for not having to give money to your family, for justifying X, Y, and Z. So that is one way that we are rejecting money. Also, when it comes to love, perhaps we're just so caught up in this idea that every man is bad and there are no good men out there, that every man cheats, that you want to be right. Your subconscious always wants to be right. So what will happen? You will only attract that type of things. And if a good thing comes your way, you can bet that you'll try to deny it. How many people have had the ideal men that they described and they completely and automatically put it in the friend zone? So being willing to receive and seeing things in another way is very, very important. And then trust the process. Just trust the process. Don't bash it after you had a nice beginning of the day and you start the day positive and enthusiastic. And then when one little tiny thing happens that don't go your way or, you know, in the way of your desires, just don't bash it and don't say this doesn't work and throw it out. No, trust the process. And in fact, when you have come closer to a new beginning, Again, ego, life, whatever it is, we'll test you to see how serious you are about this change. So I promise you that when you do this work, most likely a bad date or something related to money will show up. And that is a way of testing to see how real and honest are you about this change. So if and when that shows up, Try to recognize it as soon as possible and say, hey, thanks. Thanks because you are realizing that I'm serious about this and you want to test me. So let me show you how serious I am about this. Are you resisting? Are you holding yourself back? Be very conscious about, again, the way that you are talking, the way that you're expressing and the way that you're attracting things. Resisting, holding yourself back shows up in so many ways. And again, is your ego, your subconscious way of protecting you from something unknown, even if it's better? Having more money, I mean, most likely is better. Having a really good relationship, uh, most likely is better, I'm going to assume. But your subconscious have nothing to do with better or worse. It just wants to stay in what is known. The unknown stresses it. And it wants to protect you from the unknown because it's, it's just an area that I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen here. So even though rationally you say, of course, I want more money. Of course, I want a better relationship to your reptilian brain. It's unknown and it's danger. So again, be very cautious of the way that you're resisting yourself and be open to receiving. The process for anything that shows as resisting is send love, say thank you, forgive it, and also say I'm sorry because you attracted that in a way or another and simply start again. Send love, forgive, ask for forgiveness, and simply say thank you and start again. You deserve the love and abundance that you desire. This is my true desire for you today, and I want you to succeed. And if you found anything important that you would like to share, please send this offer to your friends and family. By simply purchasing the planner, they get access to this training. And if it helps somebody else out there, we are making this world a better place. Again, to your success. Thank you.